By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against Chris from Deutschland, Germany. And he is bringing a Mardu deck to the table. So that refers to the color combination red, white and black, I believe, in the modern days of magic. But we're not in the modern days of magic here. We're just, you know, sit back and relax. We're going back to 1993, 1994, just like you're used to. Don't worry about it. Uh, but I asked Chris, what's the name of your deck? It's Mardu. Okay, then I'm playing against the Mardu deck. I'm playing with uh, Mono Blue, the Timmy, the Sorcerer deck, Timmy's Spellbook. Now, before we're going to go to the actual match, I'm first going to do a deck deck. I have deck pictures of both of these decks. So if you're interested in that, uh, stick along, you know, stay along for the, for the ride because I'm going to do the deck deck right now. You know what to do if you want to go straight to game number one. Check the description below, click on the timestamp, and it'll take you directly to game one. And here we are going to continue with the deck deck. This is the deck of Chris. And let's take a look. Like I said before, the colors are white, uh, red, and black. And when you look at this thing, this this deck, the first thing that you uh, that you notice is that hey, there are eight creatures in this deck, and they all have regeneration, but there's no Nevenerals Disc in this deck. A well-known combo, of course, with trolls is combine it with Nevenerals Disc, let the disc go off, and then regenerate your trolls. Now it's not in not in this deck. Doesn't mean that that that's a bad thing or anything, but it's just something that I notice. Another thing that I notice is there are tons of removal cards in this deck. Look at that. Play set of Disenchant, play set of Swords, play set of Terror, play set of Lightning Bolt, two Disintegrates, two Fireballs, so you could almost call that a play set on its own as well, two Shedders, two Stone Rain. So there's a lot of removal. So I think the main goal of this deck is just to remove everything and then have the trolls left and just swing at your opponent and kill him and of course he also has uh, the direct damage to use directly at the player instead of for removal and i think in this case in a lot of cases he can actually use it directly to just kill the opponent and uh, chris actually told me that this mardu deck was inspired by the fact that he kept playing against very powerful fully powered especially blue powered decks and that he kind of felt like I want to design something that can withstand these power decks, but doesn't have power on its own. And I think that's a that's a very nice and admirable standpoint to think, okay, you know what? I want to deal with all this power, but I don't want to use the power myself. I want to think of something original. And so what he's done is just say, okay, I'm going to build a deck chock full of answers. So I think he's called it the Mardu deck. Uh, but I think you can also just call this the answer deck because look at it. Whatever I'm going to play out, I know one thing and that is that it's going to be removed. Um, so let's take a look at Timmy's spellbook and see um, what Chris can destroy at my side of the table. This is my mono blue protocol sorcerer deck. So I've called it Timmy's spellbook because basically it is full of the spells that Timmy has found on his journey because it is a story. So the protocol sorcerer. Uh, when you read the oracle text it says they acquire a taste for worldly pleasures so what better way to do to do that by going on a pirate ship so he's going on the pirate ship to sail the world and discover all these new things and experiences and in his journey he finds new spells he finds a new spell book and he leaves behind his professor the sage of latin and you see him there sitting in a chair with his book just waiting for him to come back Besides that story, there's also an idea behind this deck. You could say it's pretty much mid-range control, playing with three Maze of Ifs and three Ices. Those are my control components, of course, combined with the, the Counterspell package, four Counterspells and a Mana Drain. So I just want to get keep my opponents at bay so that I have time to build up. So I want to get my pingers out. I want to, ideally, I want to clone my pingers, get Pirate Ship in there for an extra pinger, use my Vesuvian Double Ganger so that I have eight or nine pingers on the board has never happened but ideally that will be sweet and kill my opponent by pinging him but in reality you do need some stronger creatures some mid-range creatures so i'm, I'm uh, playing with three air elementals and a my multi gene because of that sometimes i'm able to use my mana drain early in the game to counter something and then cast my maha multi gene or my air elemental earlier in the game so that's those are always nice moments doesn't happen a lot but it does happen sometimes uh, and there's, of course, the uh, the Jalen Tomes, the cards that are going to allow me to draw even more cards. And they're great when you have more of a control tactic. I mean, it just feels really good to have a counterspell up, have Maze of Ifs up, 
sending your, your opponent's creatures back and in his end step, draw a card and ping him for two or three or whatever. That just feels really good that you're in that full control mode. And while I was building this pretty early in the brew, I decided not to play Surrender Perfrit because he's also a three drop like my Protocol Sorcerer. And I also thought, you know, you see Surrender Perfrit so much already. I mean, do we really need more decks with Surrender Perfrit? And then I decided to just leave him out. And then I thought, wait a minute, if I'm not playing with Surrender Perfrit, why not just play with City in a Bottle? So I added City in a Bottle and then... I noticed I've got a lot of artifacts now in my deck. So I decided to add two copy artifacts because I think they can really do justice here. And of course, Sage of Latinum is also in this deck because of all the artifacts, you know, and, and I can really, if you've never played Sage of Latinum, I can really advise you to do it. It's a great card because whenever somebody plays artifact removal, you just tap your Sage and set your artifact in response and draw that extra card. Okay, enough talk, enough said. This is my deck. Let me know what you think about it, by the way. Always interested to hear from you. This is Timmy's Spellbook, the way the deck looks right now. <laughs> it's changing constantly, but this is what it looks like right now. Let's go to the games and let's see if I can, if I can um, compete with this Mardu deck full of destruction. And here we go. Game number one. Chris is sitting on the left and I am sitting on the right. So Chris is playing with his Mardu deck, white, black and red. And I'm playing with Timmy's Spellbook. So really curious to see how this is going to end up. And I believe Chris has just taken a mulligan. So needs to put a card now on the bottom of his library. But he is on the play, I believe or not. Uh, let's see, he's saying that he's keeping it anyway. And it looks like I'm on the player starting out really well with the Mox Sapphire and a Mishra's Factory. Interesting that I'm not starting with the blue and there's a quick strip mine on the factory. Because usually you would expect me to start with the basic blue to be able to counter. Okay, this explains it. I'm copying my own Mox Sapphire. I probably wanted to copy the Mishra's Factory. That was probably my plan having early, uh, having a double factory early in the game, but uh, it got removed by Chris. And there is a second island tapping three here. And there it is. There is Timmy. The Protocol Sorcerer is on the battlefield. Will it stay there for long? That's, of course, a question. And no, it will not. A quick disintegrate here from my opponent, Chris. And remember, we looked at the deck list. And there's so much destruction in that deck. So many answers. And here is an icy manipulator. So in his upkeep, I'm going to try to tap one of his lands. But at the end step... Or actually not at the end step, I guess in, in the upkeep there's a disenchant on the icy and there's a basic swamp here by Chris. Back to me now playing that city in a bottle. And city in a bottle is always kind of this guess because I'm playing it main and you don't know if your opponent is playing any antiquities or if he's playing a lot of antiquities. In this case, he doesn't play with any uh, antiquity creatures because he plays with Uthen Trolls and Setch Troll. And there we see the Uthen Troll hitting the board. I'm not playing out anything despite the fact that I have six mana. So that is a little problematic for me. He can go in here for six damage. Is there anything that I can do? Actually changes his mind and decides to go in for five damage instead, keeping that one factory at bay. Playing another island, just passing turn. I had a great start of this game, but it feels like I'm getting further and further behind. And there's another set troll. Am I able to maybe counter this? Because it is a 3-3 because of that uh, swamp there in the and the scrubland actually. So dealing me two damage, going to 13, playing a soul ring, even more mana. Tapping five here, playing a Vesuvan double ganger. Not ideal because I don't have any red mana to regenerate my creature here. So it's a troll basically without regenerate. And if I choose the set troll, it's only a 2-2. Two -two. <laughs> Again, we see a disintegrate. Chris is really just getting rid of everything here in this game. And I am on 8 life. So things are not looking great for me. Only one card in hand. Oh my. So this could be the end already if he attacks with both of his factories. And it looks like that's exactly what he's doing. Showing him my copy artifact. And that's it. That's game number one. That's how fast it can go. I kind of feel like if he wouldn't have been able to get rid of my factory at the start of the game, maybe I could have started like using my copy artifacts to build, build uh, a Mishra's factory army. But this was simply 
too much brutal removal. Um, let's go to our sideboards and then we'll catch up uh, with this game again in game number two. Game number two. And that, oh man, that first game went fast. So hopefully in this uh, second game, I can uh, get some permanence to stick here. At least a good opening for me with that island into a soul ring. Batlands from my opponent, Chris, here. And playing a second island. Will we see something here? No, maybe I'm just holding back on a counter spell. Playing a little bit more careful, perhaps, because of my experiences in that first game. And, you know, Chris just has this list full of removal. So just keeping a counter spell in your hand to protect what you play is actually not a bad idea. Playing a maze of if here. But I am deciding to play something. I'm going for an Icy Manipulator, keeping one mana open to tap. Something I'm choosing not to tap any lands during his upkeep. Oh, dust to dust. This is painful for me. Just paying that one blue to activate the Icy to tap that last land open for Chris, but that's not really going to do anything. But hey, you've got to do, you got to do what you can do, actually. And this is a very useful two for one for Chris here. Passing turn after playing that Desert. Desert is another card that can work really well with Timmy, by the way. And that's why it's in there. I'm playing another Maze of If. Just working on my defenses right now. And there is a Setch Troll. There is a Blue Elemental Blast. Interesting choice that I'm making here because I do have those two mazes to take care of those creature threats. But perhaps I'm, I'm afraid for Stone Rains or other land removal. Because Chris is just playing with tons of, of removal. And there we see a strip mine taking care of my first Maze of If. So having one left still to kind of protect me from that factory that's on the board. Tapping for three here. Here we see a Timmy, Prodigal Sorcerer on the... Oh, okay, we've got a Terror. And there's the Protection Counter spell. But, okay, and step Lightning Bolt. And <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing how... It's just incredible how much removal Chris has. But I guess in the end, it's just a one for one, you know, and that's something that I keep telling myself. It's just a one for one. It's fine. I mean, he's lost a Terror and a Lightning Bolt. I've lost a Counterspell and a Timmy. So that seems like reasonable trades to me. And uh, he's looking at his hand now. Tapping two, therefore a Demonic Tutor. This is going to be interesting. What is he going to look up? I mean, maybe a Mind Twist is what you would expect being tapped out. But then again... I think Chris is the type of player that likes to find something interesting and something original. So the fact that he's not playing it out kind of shows that it's probably not a mind twist. So he's passing turn here and I'm, I'm tapping five. Okay, so there's an air elemental. So I'm just going for it. Also playing a mock sapphire here. Only one card in hand. There you go. There's just a very quick terror from Chris's side. He has all the answers right now. And it's going to be difficult for me to kind of find my my way through here because just Chris has so many answers and he has more cards in hand I believe at the moment just drawing card passing turn here tapping for three there's an Uthan troll not doing anything about that the 2-2 creature drawing another card playing a strip mine tapping four and playing a control magic interesting over the Uthan troll And I mean, it's not the best creature to take because I don't have any red mana, but hey, at least he loses a creature, I get a creature. And he, I mean, he'll, he'll, oh, there's, okay, he's starting to disintegrate his own creature. I mean, that's fine as well. Oh, I'm actually saving the creature. Okay, this kind of surprises me, to be honest, but I guess I want to put some pressure on, so I'm deciding to take care of the Mishra's factory and just swing in now for four. Not using my factory. Interesting. Ah, because I want to play out a book. Maybe keep some mana open for a counter spell. And that book can be pretty decisive, but we see there are divine offerings. So that means Chris is not only removing my book or destroying my book, he's also gaining four life. So it's just going to be really difficult. At least I have the troll still and the factory to try to hit him here for four. I think it's an interesting choice not to attack with the factory. Okay, okay, this explains it. I want to play my brain geyser at least... Chris doesn't have counter spells, so I can just freely play my Brain Geyser and play an untapped island and passing turn here. But this could be decisive here, this, this, this Brain Geyser, because now I've got some, some cards in my hand, possible threats, and if Chris cannot find any answers... Oh, there is... <laughs> oh, this is so nice! I love Wheel of Fortune. So he's playing a wheel, 
Still has some mana open here. And let's see if he can play a disenchant on my control magic, because that's kind of a thing that I'm expecting him to do. And there is that disenchant taking care here of the control magic, getting the off control back, which is tapped at the moment still. So that means I do have a free swing of two with the factory, although the factory will probably be destroyed if I attack with it. I mean, it's a really big risk, especially against Chris's deck with all that removal, playing a Tolaria, beautiful land, legends, tap for a blue, and you can also tap it to take banding away from a creature. And I'm gonna tap four here, playing an Icy Manipulator, so putting some more control elements on the table. Again, choosing not to use my factory to attack. And I mean, I've got the IC now, so I'm just the whole tap game is going to start. And tapping is off control, no, tapping is factory and step. Playing another island, so I've got a lot of lands here. Kind of rearranging my cards to to be able to get a good overview of what I have. Tapping six, will we see a Mahamoti Jin? No, we see a double Timmy. And that's actually pretty nice. I wonder what Chris is gonna do. He's got a full crypt of cards in his hand. There we see a red elemental blast taking care of the first protocol sorcerer. So that's in the bin with the other one. So I've already have two of my beautiful Timmy's in the graveyard. Now let's see what my opponent can do here. And we seem to be discussing probably the fact that this, this game is going nowhere at the moment. And I, of course I have that Icy that I'm gonna use at the end to tap something down. I don't think it matters too much. And there we see a Lightning Bolt probably on the Protocol Sorcerer and there we see a Blue Elemental Blast to protect it. And will we see another removal card here? We see a Disintegrate and yeah, it's gone. It's removed from the game. That means three Protocol Sorcerers already are in the bin. That's not great when you're having a pinger deck. There is a control magic. I'm again stealing the, the off control. And it looks like I'm attacking now for two, finally with the factory. I think that's, that's something I, I should have done earlier in the matchup. And there is a red elemental blast. So he gets to troll back. Of course, it has summoning sickness now again on his side of the board. So he cannot attack with it. Tapping his factory. And I guess I can now tap his troll and, and hit him for two, but then I take some damage as well, but I'm still on 20, so maybe I should play a little bit more aggressive. That's exactly what I'm doing, hitting him for two here, so he's going to 16, still has a lot of life. And, and can I find something, air elemental, something else? Vesuvan double ganger, I'm actually copying my own, um, my own Mishra's factory. So that is interesting. So we've got a Vesuvan double ganger that's now actually a land. And there is a Setch Troll. That's not too bad. Deciding he decides not to attack. There was a little opening there, but I'm still on 20. Finding another Mishra's factory. So this is actually pretty good. And I mean, he's still on 16, but it's up to me now to try to find openings and slowly start chipping away at his life total. Of course, tapping is set stroke because it's the strongest creature that he has on the board at the moment. With a, It's a 3-3 three, three now. And the set stroke and off control are difficult to deal with because they have that regeneration. So it's difficult to deal with them in combat. And it looks like I'm thinking what to do. Because remember, I have that maze of if as well that I can use to take something out of combat. Animating my Vesuvan double ganger that's actually a factory attacking, and there's oh, it's so funny because I'm making all of these plans in my mind like, okay, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna try to, to inflict some damage? And then he's like, okay, swords, swords, and we're kind of like in this stuck position where he cannot get through because I've got the maze and the icy. Um, but I cannot get through because he just has so much removal. Tapping four and we see a clone. What am I going to clone actually? 
I guess I'm going to clone a factory, but I'm not sure did I animate it? This is always hard, like these plays, this is a game from a while back, so it's hard for me to remember what I actually did. But we'll see, we'll see as how the game progresses. I think it's sensible for me to just copy a clone. And it looks like Chris is kind of checking his sideboard to see what he boarded in and what, especially what he boarded out. So end step, I'm tapping that set troll and he's just passing turns. So he's not doing too much at the moment. I'm tapping another troll, probably gonna, yeah, so it's a Mishra's Factory. So swinging in here with a 2-2 Mishra's Factory, bumping it up to four, doing some serious damage here, playing a second Maze of If. And it looks like slowly but surely, I'm finding my way through Chris's defenses and I'm able to deal some damage here but uh i'm saying this and there's another often troll and remember i think i'm gonna have to do something with those maze of ifs attacking and then choosing what creatures i want to take out of combat so let's see what i can do probably gonna pass turn tap a creature at his end step and then swing in again but this is complicated this this kind of this combat maths that you have to do Playing a Chaos Orb. Okay, that's interesting. Wanting to activate it now or not? No. Just leaving it on the board. So maybe I'm going to do it on his end step. Because what I basically want to do is just get rid of some blockers. But there's another Mishra's Factory, so another blocker. Tapping his Set Troll. Activating my Chaos Orb here. Okay, so we're going to see a flip, so I'll put it on slow-mo. And there we go, the flip here, boom, it's a hit. And he's actually not playing a disenchant or doing anything against it. So that's a little bit of a surprise to me. So, okay, putting all my cards back, it just keep reorganizing all my stuff. Okay, um, yeah, tap down his set troll as well. So there's a little opening. And he's asking me if I've already played my brain geyser. And yes, I have. So that's less of a worry for my opponent here for Chris. Uh, let's see what I can do. I probably have to start calculating with my mazes of if because what you can do is I can simply attack with everything then what he decides to block I can take it out of combat with my mazes and use those mazes to actually uh, pump my other maze. So it's quite interesting here. The maze of if gives you a uh, maze of if gives you a lot of possibilities in this case and that's probably why I'm deciding to attack with all no I'm just deciding to attack with two here Maybe three would have actually been better. Taking one out of combat and choosing to pump it up. That means that he gets four more damage. He was going to eight here from 12 to eight because he decided to only block one with his often troll, not using his factory, knowing that that would probably mean that his factory would die. But it does mean that I'm a little bit open. We see another Satch troll. Oh man, every time I'm thinking that I've like created an opening he's just playing another troll or taking care of one of my threats very difficult here tapping for six will we see yes a mahamoti jin this is quite okay terror okay it is what it is i was hoping to swing in of course with the mahamoti but he is on eight you know so i just have to be patient and end step tapping one of his set trolls Paying four now, playing a book. So that's actually pretty good. If it can stick, even if he disenchants the book, at least I get one card out of it. And there is a disenchant. So this is the card that I talked about. It's going to draw a card. Maybe that can provide another threat. Maybe an air elemental or something like that. Only have one more Timmy in my deck. So do have some copy artifacts as well which are basically more Mishra's factories in the current board state, or maybe maybe an extra IC, we'll see. And finding another Mishra's factory, so this is great. Having four Mishra's factories on the board, and, and the Mishra's are just proven to be so important because they cannot be terred. Uh, you can only take, you can only play Disenchant once they're animated. Attacking here for three, having those two mazes open makes a world of a difference, and they're He's animating one of his factories, making it a 2-2. Two -two. Gonna block making it a 3-3, three -three. so now he's declared block. So before damage is dealt, I'm gonna use my Maze of Ifs. Yeah, I'm gonna use my Maze of Ifs to take out two of the factories, pump the one remaining factory to a 4-4. Four -four. And 
and yeah it looks like at the moment in response he's going to play the bolt and when all the dust has cleared i have lost my mishra's factory it looks like chris has lost his mishra's factory as well because he waited for the damage to be dealt so then it was a 4-4 four, four, four against a 3-3 three, three, and then with the lightning bolt it meant that my factory died as well and these are some uh, some interesting board states and situations here in this game and again uh, tapping that set at the end of my turn finding a control magic again and I think I actually put two extra in from the sideboard so I'm actually playing with four control magics right now in this matchup attacking with three not sure why i'm already okay activating the maze to take care of one to make it a three three so it doesn't die to the troll and that means two more damage here i believe for chris so chris is now on three life and things are looking dire now for chris another satch troll but i don't think it's it's really going to save him because i can just slowly tap things down again and just get get the damage in that i need to get in and i think those mazes are so important in combat in the current situation so it's really nice when you look at this game it's a really nice um, exhibition of the power of the maze of if of like what you can do with maze of if in combat situations especially when you combine it with that weird creature mishra's factory that you can simply untap before damage is dealt and then use to pump one of your other factories tapping five here so it has to be yeah it has to be an air elemental coming from my side an extra threat on the table and if he cannot find an answer here he's actually show, he's showing me his cards but i think i want to finish the game so i'm saying chris just just give me the pleasure of killing you with an air elemental he says okay man we'll, we'll play that one more game uh that one more turn I, I, I mean so this is a victory here for me it's a 1-1 one, one, so it's not a match victory but it is a victory of the game so it's 1-1 one, one. and how ex how long and and complex I mean this game was was complex and was difficult it was hard for me to comment for you as well looking at all the combat situation but uh let's give these players let's give myself and Chris some time to Go and, and have another look at our sideboard, make some new cho choices for our final game. Game number three. Game number three. It's going to be decided here who is going to win this matchup. We saw a game one that was ended very, very quickly. And then we saw a game two that seemed to have no end at all and that I managed to win in the end. So two very different games. But one thing... Um, one thing that we can be sure about is that after this game number three, we'll know what deck has won this matchup. And let's see what's happening on the table here. Chris playing, playing another land. Not too much has happened yet. I've opened there with that beautiful Mox Sapphire playing another basic island. Not doing much. And Chris cannot find a land drop here. So that is good news for me. Tapping four, playing, ooh, playing an Icy, meaning that I can start tapping down his lands. Oh, a dust to dust. Again, a dust to dust here from Chris. He did that in game number two as well. And it's just very, very brutal. Such a nice two for one for Chris here. Tapping four. Will we see another icy hitting the board? No, it's a book. So the tome, hopefully it can draw me some cards. But I am open to some damage now. And can Chris find some trolls? Actually going to attack with his factory. Why not? I'm going to 18. And then playing a disenchant over my book. And there's that control again by chris because he plays with so much removal again for playing another artifact there's an icy manipulator and deciding not to tap down his factory in his upkeep playing a plateau here let's see what he's going to do and i believe i have that city of brass in my mind to tap that city of brass with my icy to deal in one damage and if he animates his factory, I'm then going to tap down his factory, but it doesn't mean that he spent two mana on it. Look at that, a Satch Troll 3-3 three, three creature deciding to tap his city here, at least dealing one damage. But I need to put some more defenses up here, finding another island, tapping four. There's a control magic again. And I guess my idea with the control magics is, is I mean, he only has four disenchants right so and there are so many targets for his disenchant so let's just make it really difficult for him to choose of course he also has red elemental blast but i have blue elemental blast so 
there's uh, there's a terror on the troll, but I actually I like it this way because now it's kind of a two for one. So I've spent one control magic and he's spent. Uh, ooh, there's a blue elemental blast on the set troll. Tapping down his remaining lands here with the icy manipulator. Remaining land, I should say. Tapping five, and there's a beautiful air elemental. So let's see if it can stick. I doubt it, but it would be really nice. Tapping two, there's a terror, and it's doing a lot of work, the terrors in Chris's deck. Oh, and there is a Stone Rain taking care of the factory. Tapping seven, will we see a Brain Geyser? Yes, there is a Brain Geyser. Six new cards, and this could be, again, a decider here, because I'm refilling my hand. I was on zero cards, now I'm on six cards because of that Brain Geyser, or actually I should say on five cards. Because Brain Geyser is double blue, of course, so using it for five here, paying seven mana, passing turn. I am open, but I'm still on 18, so that's not going to be a really big problem for me. Demonic Tutor, is he going to, again, is he now going to look up that Mind Twist? And then the question is, is he going to twist me for two immediately, or does he want to wait and twist me for a bigger number next turn? But if he does, you know, maybe I'll be able to play my most important cards out already. So this is difficult, or maybe Chris has something completely different in mind. You know, maybe he's picking up another Dust to Dust. Actually picking up an enchantment, playing that over my Icy Manipulator. Icy can be a pain, so I, I understand it. Picking up another card, six cards in hand now. Playing a Protocol Sorcerer. Playing another Island. And there's a Red Elemental Blast. At least he's taking a damage for it, you know. What, what can you do? What can you do, really? And there we see an attack here, going to 16. And there's a Mace of If to protect me. Still have, shoot, I still have some cards in hand, deciding not to do anything. Really, really, I think I'm playing really careful here with my counter spells, wanting to time them correctly. Playing a Mishra's Factory as well. Drawing a card, playing an island, tapping four here, and there is a book. The tome is on the table. And that could get me some card advantage. There is another city by Chris, passing turn and step, using that tome, drawing an extra card. That's what you want to do when you're in a standstill. It's not that bad when you have the book. Playing a Chaos Orb here. Are we going to see another flip? Going to activate it. And yes, let's put it in slow-mo. And there we go with the flip. <laughs> oh, it's, it's going on my, like, look at my camera. It actually landed on my deck and then kind of landed in a weird way. But I guess it wasn't the best flip ever, but it hit the factory. So factory's gone. And I guess I did it on my end step, of course. There's a counter spell over these swords to Plows here, so that, mean that, that means that I'm able to deal two damage here to Chris. He's on 12 already because of those cities. Now he's going to 10. And there we see he's trying to hit me with his Disintegrate, but I'm able to play a blue Elemental Blast. And he's wide open now, so I can attack him at least for two. I'll make that three because I can pump my own factory now. Attacking, making it for three, going to seven. Drawing an extra card here. Let's see if I can find some more pressure here for Chris. And I found it in the form of a Protocol Sorcerer. There is the Timmy. And a quick disintegrate on the Tim, but that's not gonna solve Chris's problems because I can still hit him for four next turn. And he's on seven, so he's pretty low on life here. And with that book, I can keep drawing cards. I think that's very important here at this point in the game. Playing a Mace of If, tapping two to animate both of my Mishra's factories, attacking here with two. Drawing a card, maybe I can find some kind of, maybe I can find a counter spell. And the factory is dead, dealing two damage here to Chris, going to five. Untapping at end of combat and tapping four. Interesting, playing a clone over my mistress factory because it was still a factory okay so this is some high-tech <laughs> action here there is a stone rain on the cloned mistress factory 
but I still have one open. Let's see if I can deal some damage. And going to attack for two here. It's going to three. And let's see, I, I, I guess I need to draw a card. That's important. And it looks like Chris is pretty light on cards himself. Passing turn here, of course, drawing a card end on my on his end step with the book. Attacking for two, going to one here. Playing an air elemental. Playing a quick terror on the air elemental. But is there... Ooh, there's a mana drain. So that's nice. That I still had that mana drain. Putting those uh, the dice there to show that I get two mana at my next main phase from that mana drain. And there is the terror. And he is <laughs> he's killing himself. For the simple reason, he just cannot get rid of that last Mistress Factory. And oh man, Chris, thank you for this match. It was a thriller. It was a absolute thriller. And it looks like I've won this one. And um, the interesting thing is what I said in the introduction already is that Chris, with this deck, he wanted to make a deck that's, or he still wants to, I guess, to make a deck that has answers to power decks, but doesn't have power on its own. So I think... Um, I think that's that's an interesting thing to do and that's an interesting way to brew because you know in in tournaments you're going to have to face power all the time especially the blue power can be very decisive so if you have any tips uh for chris when you look at this deck list uh, what do you think of this list where do you think um he can improve the list without adding any power or any other I, well i don't know maybe he can add colors i don't know he did it didn't say that he only wants to play with these colors but let me know in the comments below if you have any ideas uh, how he can improve his deck even how he can improve his deck further uh, for now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks. If you want to support the channel, well, you've already done it by simply watching this video. Thank you very much for that. Leave a comment, leave a like, hit that notification bell. And uh, of course, you can also support us on Patreon by becoming a patron of Timmy Talks. That really helps a lot. And talking about patrons, let's take a look at the end scroll. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee!